Hello everyone! Welcome back to another update video. I'm DTM as always, and we have with us the November 2022 update with these weapon refines. This one has been duly anticipated because of the remixes that are part of this batch. And personally for me, I was super excited for Cynthia's refine, being a huge Cynthia fan myself in Fire Emblem. But yeah, nothing else to do but to dig into these refines. Thanks again to Phoenix Master One for the graphics as always. And yeah, if you enjoyed this, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that jazz to help support the channel. Only takes five seconds to subscribe, but it truly does help out this channel a lot. And I really do appreciate all the constant support. All right, let's get started and see what Elliewood's refine is. Elliewood does have an upgraded Arden and Durandal, which now grants attack plus three at the start of turn, grants bonus doubler to unit and ally with the highest attack excluding unit. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants attack speed, defense, res, plus 4 to unit during combat. So compared to his original, um, obviously you now get the uh, the attack speed, defense, res, plus 4 to the unit itself, Elliewood. And now Elliewood also gets bonus doubler as well. So that is what changes between the, um, the, the un- refined base effect with the current base effect. Um, obviously, this really helps with Elliewood's combat potential. I was hoping for something a little bit more supportive, but I mean, this is fine, I guess. Now, the refined effect is, if unit initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, grants all stats plus four to unit and neutralizes foe's bonuses during combat and deals damage equals to 50% of foe's defense. So again, this is once more trying to improve Elliewood's own combat effects, which again, I personally would have preferred something a lot more supportive because his remix, which we will see in a moment, is extremely good support for basically any team, especially Omni-taking teams. But Elliewood getting more combat um, support is not like too bad, considering that Elliewood is super good in something like Summoner's Duels, and having Elliewood be good at combat there, and not strictly a support unit, is actually very beneficial, because it allows Elliewood to potentially clean up um, units without having to use that Omni tank, or say, if they manage to break through the Omni tank, it's not like the end of the world, you can still rely on Elliewood, for instance. So yeah, even though like this is not completely supportive, I think in the context of Summoner's Duels, this is really good, especially with the effects of neutralizing the foes' bonuses, just getting rid of all those visible buffs, which are really common in Summoner's Duels, and the true damage based on the foes' defense will scale really nicely as defense stats continue to climb. But of course, this is not even really the biggest thing about Elliewood. What Elliewood really benefits from is his remix skill, that being Vision of Arcadia 2. At the start of turn, if Dragon or Beast ally is deployed, grants attack speed defense plus 6, no panic, and canto 1 to unit and ally with the highest attack, excluding unit, for one turn. And yeah, the rest is just definitions, but this is so many effects. Uh, Brave Craw will really appreciate getting all of this, because that is basically what, like three stacks right there? It's not even counting potentially having something like Asker, which obviously really helps with uh, enabling Vision of Arcadia. No Panic means that Bonus Doubler is basically always going to be there unless you have like a Dole All effect or a LOL skill. So it's going to be very hard to get rid of the visible stats and the Bonus Doubler of the Omni Tank that you're supporting. And it also gives you attack speed, defense plus six to help with that Bonus Doubler. And so you really only need res in addition to complete the full spectrum. And obviously Canto 1 is really good for positioning. You'd be surprised how big Canto 1 can be in helping you uh, open a lot more offensively or a lot more flexibility wise. Um, Canto 1 really helps with that movement and it's really nice even though that, even though it's not exactly the biggest um, as compared to like Canto 2 or Hit and Run Canto 2, but still, just moving back one is really helpful for something like Flame Lin, which could, like, in Might of Myriad series, seasons, um, her weapon and A skill relies on units th being there within four spaces of the combat, so just moving back one could really help maintain that range. And yeah, this is extremely strong, especially since like this, uh, 
this condition is very easy to meet because we have so many good um, Dragon and Beast units right now, right? Like we have all the far saves, like Ascendant Idun, Rearm Grima, Kanagus even. Um, we have uh, Fallen Lilith, which pretty much if you're running an Omni tank, you always, always use Fallen Lilith if you have her. So right there, like this is such an easy condition to meet. Eliwood is such an amazing support unit now, and you'll definitely see him whenever Omni tanks are huge in summoner's duels. Even outside of that, like Omni tanks in Ether 8's offense during win season, you'll also be seeing this a lot. And yeah, this is a really good refine. I really like it. Definitely meta in my personal opinion, especially during Might of Myriad seasons. All right, next we have uh, Yune with Chaos Manifest. So her refine new base effect is grants res plus three at the start of combat if foe's HP is greater than or equal to 75%, or if penalty is active on foe, grants attack plus six res plus five to unit during combat. Unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack, and also if unit initiates combat, reduces damage from foe's first attack by X percent, X being two times the total penalty on foe within two spaces of a target, including target who has the highest total penalties. So, yeah, um, that's a lot more than her original base effect, which was basically just um, granting that res plus three, and if there's a penalty inflicted like panic or threaten, which is basically like um, uh, the visible debuffs or a negative status effect if active on foe, grants attack plus six, and unit makes a guaranteed follow-up. So obviously, she now gets res plus five as well, and damage reduction. And this is really interesting because um, technically this has no cap. So theoretically, it, you could have 100% damage reduction with this effect. As you can see from this Redditor, uh, yeah, <laughs> Edelgard is doing zero damage because apparently there's just so much uh, penalties on the foe's team to just negate all of that. Um, now, keep in mind, this is pierceable, so things like Lethality, Deadeye, uh, Twin Blades will definitely be able to pierce through this, and this is only from the foe's first attack, so the second attack you don't get any damage reduction. Um, so, and Yoon doesn't really have the highest speed or any um, null, or any like deny follow-up attacks from what I can tell, so you will still be able to double her relatively well, and, you know, be able to get through that that way. Though obviously, effectively, your damage is getting taken off by half. But still, like, this is really strong, especially if Yune initiates, as having that foe, um, the foe's first attack be damage reduced is very strong in order to get, like, a potential second hit with that guaranteed follow-up attack. Um, her refine effect now is unit, if unit initiates combat or is within two space of an ally, grants attack res plus five to unit during combat and deals damage equals to total penalties on foe within two spaces of a target, including target, who has the highest total penalties, excluding AoEs. So yeah, not only does she now have potentially 100% true uh, damage reduction on the first hit, she now also has basically like a better dominance because this is not only dominance on the target, but also including the debuffs of the foes within the two spaces of that target. So even if the target has a neutralizing penalty effect, say like Brave Hector, that doesn't matter as long as you have penalties on the surrounding teammates, which if you're in a save ball, is most likely the case. And having true damage based on the penalties is no joke. Like the only reason why dominance didn't like pop off is because of dual hindrance. But now you have this on defense, and this pairs really nicely with something like Bridal Catria. Yune is in Dark Season, so we don't have to worry about Elamine. And so that is theoretically, even assuming like a base minus six to all the stats penalties, that is like 24 true damage per brave. That is just insanely strong. It's really, really good. Now, of course, it remains to be seen whether this is enough to get through Hardy Fighter far saves. Hardy Fighter does shut down Yune's guaranteed follow-up attack. So, um, for the more uh, speedy far saves, she's not going to be able to double consistently. But for the more slower ones, like um, 
non-invested brave hectors or sun idunes i think um she'll still be able to double just naturally through the speed check assuming you have enough speed so theoretically you can quad with all that true damage and yeah that is extremely strong like there are very few things that can get through that unfortunately we don't have a mage special that can get through damage reduction so things like deflect magic will still be able to hinder her relatively well um, there's not a lot getting through 80% damage reduction. Um, especially, it, but like, as long as she gets that double in, um, you can end the foe, like, counterattacks. Like, you can just reset that. Although, honestly, you probably get uh, Aegis back up on the foe. So again, her being able to punch through Hardy Fighter far saves will determine whether or not she will be very good. But still, like, I think this is very strong. And Yune is now, like, among the upper echelons of Dark Mythics. Honestly, never thought I'd see the day. And this is even counting her remix skill, which is Chaos Name Plus. At the start of turn, if any foe have the highest attack speed, defense, or res on the enemy team, inflicts minus 7 on that corresponding stat of those foes and foes within two spaces of those foes through their next actions. At the start of turn, if any foe has the highest attack speed, defense, res on the enemy team, inflicts panic on those foes. So yeah, obviously this really helps enables um, Yune's uh, weapon, both the damage reduction and the um, and the true damage. And the good thing about this is that it's not just you know like a chill, but also affects things with the foes within the two spaces of those foes that are being targeted by the quote unquote chill. So this is really good, and because this is um, inflicting independently, uh, one unit for the highest attack, one unit for the highest speed. Could be the same, could be different. Um, that means you get those debuffs very well spread out on the foe's team, and therefore get the basically maximum amount of debuffs you could possibly get. So yeah, very, very strong. Um, I really like this refine. Like, again, it remains to be seen whether she can punch through um, Hardy Fighter Farsays, and especially when we get a mage damage reduction special, uh, piercing damage reduction special for mages, uh, that's when she will really shine. But even now, I think she is really strong, and I can't wait to see what people use her for in uh, the dark defenses. Alright, next we have a Python, and Python has a new weapon, Snide Bow. Effective against flying foes at the start of combat if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants attack speed plus 5 to unit during combat, and uh, unit deals plus 7 damage. So, base effect is alright, I guess. Like, attack speed plus 5 is okay. I mean, not even spectrum. Like, what? <laughs> uh, true damage, I guess, is sort of supposed to make up with that. Um, anyways, the refine is if unit initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, inflicts speed defense minus 5 on foe during combat, and inflicts penalty on foe's speed defense during combat equals to current bonus on each of those foe's stats times 2. Calculates each stat independently. So basically what uh, Python has, besides the standard speed defense minus 5, is that basically this is like an in-combat panic on the foe's speed and defense. If foes have any bonuses, those bonuses will become neutralized and have in-combat debuffs the same as those bonus effectively. Eh, this is sort of, I don't know. I guess it's alright, but I don't know. There's no, like, guard effects, there's no, like, follow-up effects, there's no... Th this is just, like, pure stats, right? There's nothing, anything else special, and honestly, it's kind of mid. <laughs> I don't I feel like whatever the upcoming Arcane Bow will be, will be a lot better than this, and also... I don't know. Th I think there's just, like, a lot better bows. Like, I think this, uh... Upcoming bow we have... Uh, with, like, the slow brave. I think it's just better still. I don't know. I'm, I'm not feeling it, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, next, we have a Halloween Hector. Now, Halloween Hector is notable in that Hector is the first uh, duel we have a refine of. And the refine is as follows. Effective against armored foes grants attack plus 3. If it is an odd number turn or foe's HP is less than 100% at the start of combat, grants attack speed defense rest plus 4 to unit during combat, and reduces damage from foe's first attack by X%. percent. So basically Hector originally just had the uh, 
all stats plus 4. Uh, the condition still remains the same, but honestly, that's sort of a shame because I feel like this condition is really restrictive. Um, relying on odd turns is not that consistent because, you know, you, preferably you want your effects to be on for all of the turns, not just half of them. And most cases, you won't really have the opportunity to only engage on odd turns. And also, foe's HP being less than 100% is also not that great because most of the time, your foe's HP will be, you know, 100%. Now, obviously, Dual Hector does have his dual skill, which is really nice. But in something like Aether Rays, he's not going to be able to use it because of dual hindrance. So you can't really rely on that to activate his weapons condition, which, again, he'll need in order to not only get the stat buffs, but also the damage reduction as well. Now the damage reduction is actually really nice, like if the foe can double, the foe's first attack will be reduced by 60%, otherwise it will be reduced by 30%. But honestly, I think I prefer like something like Valentine's Gustav in effect, and also keep in mind that this is pierceable by something like Lethality and Deadeye, or even Twin Blades. So it's not like there are ways to get around this. And I think these days we've been moving a bit towards a Hardy Fighter um, Aegis in terms of far save or Hardy Fighter Pavis when it comes to near save. And unfortunately, Hector does not have slaying. So uh, you have to run something like Escution or um, what is it? What's the what's the one for the f I forgot what the two turn one for uh, far saves is. Shows you how much I use that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the refined effect is at the start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants all stats plus 4 to unit during combat, inflicts penalty on foe's attack defense during combat equals to 10% of unit's attack during combat, and restores 7 HP to unit during combat. After combat, sorry. So yeah, he gets a bit of healing, um, he gets um, he gets debuffs based on his current attack, which it, you can probably get it to between 4 and 8, depending on how high you... Um, stack the attack stat? Excuse me. But still, like, compared to our current armors, I don't think this is that great, especially compared to something like Dual Duma, right? Uh, I just think Dual Duma is a lot better, and yeah, honestly, I'm not really feeling it, to be perfectly honest. Now, there are probably situations where you can make this really work, like some cool vantage strats in SDS, but for the most part, I don't think he'll be meta by any means. Alright, next we have Fallen Corrin, Fallen Female Corrin, and Fallen Female Corrin's new Savage Breath base effect is Grants Attack plus 3, Grants All Stats plus X during combat, calculates X based on the number of allies within 2 spaces of a unit, basically the same as her base effect originally. If number of allies within 2 spaces is less than or equal to 1, neutralizes unit's penalties during combat, and then the dragon adaptive damage. So compared to her original base effect, uh, she basically now gets the um, neutralizing penalties based on the amount of units within two spaces. That's what's new from this. And uh, she also gets like one more attack, one more stat <laughs> max compared to her base, like from plus six to plus seven. Oh yes. Um, although it does spread out a lot more. So even if you have like two, it's not the end of the world. Um, it is a bit of a shame, though, that, like, um, she still has this super restrictive condition, because as an Omni tank, or just, like, a tank, uh, infantry tank in general, um, what you want to do is generally have at least one support unit behind you, and granted, that one support unit still helps with enabling that neutralizing the unit's penalties, which is a very strong effect in something like Aether Raids, but still, obviously... Um, it's still pretty restrictive. You only get plus 5 instead of plus 7. And also, at the start of combat, this is the refine effect. If unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants all stats plus 4 to unit during combat, and reduces damage from foe's first attack by X%, percent, X being 30 minus the number of allies within two spaces of unit times 10. Uh, at the start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, and unit's attack is greater than foe's res, unit's first attack deals damage equals to X% percent of the difference between stats. X being 30 minus the number of allies within two spaces of units times 10. So again, like, this is just penalizing you from having any units within two spaces. So even though, like, technically the max is 30, uh, more often than not, if you want the one support unit behind you, that just becomes 
uh, damage reduction, which is honestly not that great. And also, that becomes 20% true damage of the that difference between the stats, which, again, is not that great. So, I mean, I think Fallen Corn will be good, I think, but definitely not meta by any means, especially compared to the likes of, say, the Omni Tanks we have of Brave, uh, Dimitri, um, Flameland during Might of Myriad season, you know, things like that. Yeah, I don't... Fallen Corn is definitely not that uh, high. <laughs> Um, but yeah, next we have Cynthia, and as a Cynthia fan, I was super excited for this, and boy did Ayas did not disappoint. Um, she got a new Lance, Lance of Heroics, and the effect is, if an ally's HP is less than or equal to 80%, unit can move to a space adjacent to that ally. So Wings of Mercy 4, right off the bat. At the start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants bonus unit, grants bonus to units, Attack speed defense res during combat equals to 4 plus X, X being the number of spaces from start position to end position of whoever initiate combat times 2 max 8. So yeah, she has Spectrum Clash, which is really nice, because if you're using that Wings of Mercy, you can effectively have plus 12 to all stats just right there. Um, but that is still not it. We still have the Refine effect. If unit is within 3 spaces of an ally, grants all stats plus 4 to unit during combat, and bonus to attack speed defense res during combat equals to current penalty on each of those stats times 2. So this is a spectrum unity, which really fits thematically. Like, this entire kit fits so well thematically. Like, the Wings of Mercy is like the heroic entrances that Cynthia always will try to go for, and the unity really fits her personality, especially in the future past. Um, if you know the future past, even if when all hope seems lost, uh, she still is. She still believes that there is a way out of it, and she still believes that they can fight through it. And I really love that being uh, incorporated as part of her weapon. It really fits well thematically. Now, as a unit herself, this weapon is also really good. Um, definitely not like meta by or like top tier by any means, but very very strong, especially in something like uh, Gale Force. Having Gil Wings of Mercy 4 is super good, and also opens up the B for something like Flow Guard, which will make sure that she is able to double, especially with all the stats she's getting. She cannot be penalized either, and if, like, say, you have um, the Flyer Shrine in, uh, you can obviously just get a huge amount of stats just that way as well. And yeah, I mean, it's basically Wings of Mercy and a huge stat stick. But having Wings of Mercy in the weapon enables you to run a lot of B skills, again, like Flow Guard, which grants Guard and half of NFU. So honestly, that is all she really needs. Obviously, the one thing that does sort of hold her back is the fact that there's no slaying. So you need to run something like Asker or Quicken Pulse in order to make Gale Force consistent, and the lack of a special acceleration. So you have to run, like, Heavy Blade on Cynthia, which is obviously... Um, I mean, you can do it on the A, but obviously, or on the S if you support with like Asker or Dual Chrom. But obviously, like, those are not in her weapons, so you sort of have to play around that. But still, I think she'll be a very good unit, especially for Gale Force. And I'm super excited to see if I can do like a Sumia, Cynthia, Gale Force theme team this upcoming Chaos season. That would be super cool. Because I do have Sumia, and I think the one reason why Sumia didn't sort of, like, pop off is because she is a 5-star exclusive that not a lot of people had, even though she had, like, the Kanto in her weapon. Um, not a lot of people will just summon just for her, uh, based on that refine, even though I do think it is pretty good. Anyways, uh, next we have Petra, last but certainly not least. Um, her new Hunting Blade base effect is Accelerate Special Trigger. Effective against beast foes, if unit is within 3 spaces of an ally, grants all stats plus 4 to unit during combat. At the start of combat, if unit's attack speed, defense, res, minus 4 is less than the same stat of an ally within 3 spaces, grants plus 6 to unit's corresponding stat during combat, each independently. So yeah, compared to her base effect, uh, basically it goes from plus 5 to plus 6, but it does have a more lenient condition, in that she doesn't have to outstat the allies strictly, it can just be within, like, a four. So even if, say, uh, the foe, I mean, the ally has, like, 36 attack, 
I mean, not 36, uh, 35 attack, that still fits within this condition. And obviously, in addition, she has all stats plus four as well. So, honestly, um, a more lenient condition is very nice. I'm still not a big fan of it because it just doesn't incentivize you building Petra up or like merging up Petra. Um, but like making it more lenient, you know, I'm always down for that. Um, the refine effect is at the start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants all stats plus 4 to units during combat, neutralizes effects that prevent units' follow-up attacks, and at the start of combat, if those HP is equal to 100%, and unit initiates combat, neutralizes effects that inflict special cooldown charge minus X on unit during combat, and reduces damage from foe's first attack by 60%. So this is actually really good. Like, obviously, half and if you make sure that she always doubles, um, and as long as the foe HP is equal to 100%, which should be most cases, unless you run like Duma or something, uh, you uh, you also get tempo and damage reduction by 60%, which is really strong because it helps her survive counterattacks so that she can more consistently double. Um, now, obviously, this is affected by uh, Dead Eye, Lethality, or Twin Blades, but those aren't really common on the tanks right now. So you should be able to get the 60%. Um, damage reduction in most cases, and having the tempo here enables her to proc specials very consistently. Now, unfortunately, because she is a flyer, um, uh, she can't run something like Times Pulse, so Lethality won't always be consistently proc. You'll need to get that cooldown down by one, uh, just one more. Like, with the special acceleration in her weapon, Lethality will be at 3 cooldown, she attacks once, that will be at 2, the foe attacks back, that will be at 1, and then Petra will attack, but obviously that is not charged yet. Lethality isn't charged, it's still at 1, so she needs just one more cooldown count of minus 1 in order to consistently proc Lethality. Um, so yeah, that is a bit unfortunate, but still, I really like Petra's Refine. She'll definitely find a lot of use in something like Bridocatria teams. Um, being able to quad obviously would solve that lethality issue, and yeah, I can definitely see her doing very well in like ARD, especially in Dark Season. But yeah, overall, these are the refines. Very strong batch, I would say, especially when it comes to the legendary and mythics. I think those are obviously the huge standouts. Like, Elliewood is like one of the best supports in the entire game right now. Yoon has ridiculous damage and ridiculous survivability. Again, remains to be seen whether or not she can pierce through Hardy Fighter Far saves, but regardless, she is going to be very strong. Other than that, I think the rest, the other ones that are very good are Cynthia and Petra. Cynthia obviously will be super cool for Gale Force, especially as a Grail unit. Like that is very that is a very strong weapon for a Grail unit. So I will very much appreciate that, being able to plus 10 that and run that on my Gale Force teams. And Petra obviously has really good offensive power, especially in something like a Bridal Catria team. So yeah, definitely expect to see them somewhat in the meta. Um, the other ones are okay, I guess, like Corrin and Hector, they're okay. Not, not the worst, not the greatest, they're just okay. And then Python is kind of middling. But yeah, those are the refines. Um, the other thing that we have on the update is, of course, the stats of the uh, upcoming banner. And as we expected, um, they're mostly on the slow side and bulky side. Like, Dual Legarn um, obviously has very high attack, defense, and res, completely sacrificing speed. So uh, hopefully you uh, are able to take out units within uh, the brave hit of Legarn because she is not doubling by any means, I guess, especially against like Hardy Fighter with like NFU, defensive NFU. So honestly, I'm not even sure if like Legarn is a strict upgrade compared to something like Linja. I, I feel like Linja with like disarm trap and higher speed. I don't know. Like, I don't think it's just. I don't think it's worth like like, sacking Linja for Legarn. Like, what Legarn has is better combat, but Linja has better speed and, um, disarm trap. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't think Legarn will be that better at dealing with Hardy Fighter Fire saves compared to Linja to warrant that. I don't know. Uh, Camilla, obviously, again, 
uh, completely ditching speed, going all in on attack, defense, and res. Very high res, which is really nice. And yeah, I didn't know back when I reacted, but she has Vantage as long as her res is greater than the foe's res. And that is actually really good. I'm super excited to see what Camilla can do. Hopefully get a mage special, like a mage damage piercing special soon, because that would just complete the set. A Cherche, as always, both have like very high attack, defense, res, low speed. Heath, slightly better speed, but honestly not that much. And yeah, basically, uh, they're all the same. <laughs> Heart does have uh, less res though, which is a bit concerning, but yeah. Honestly, stats as we expected. And yeah, um, upcoming is going to be talking about the spoilers for the upcoming Tempest Trials, so if you don't want to get spoiled on that, uh, feel free to leave the channel right now. Um, this is your final war warning. If you're still here, I assume you're okay with that. And yeah, we have the art now for Ganglot. And let me tell you, I am so down with this art. She looks super cool. Like, look at this. This is such a cool aesthetic. I love this so much. Like, oh my goodness. Like, this is such a cool design. Like, oh my goodness. Like, this is so cool. I really love this. And yeah, she is confirmed that she will have an arcane weapon. We have an arcane axe. So I guess this sort of breaks with the, um... With the, uh with the theme we've had where like the demo seasonal would be indicating the what's next on the rearmed. Um, but I mean, that was only like two times. So it wasn't really much of a pattern anyways. But yeah, that is super cool. I really like this art a lot. So yeah, overall, this is the, uh, this is the update for November 22. Let me know down in the comments, which refine is your favorite out of this batch? Yeah. I am super excited for, again, pretty much, like, Eliwood, Yune, and Cynthia. I Unfortunately, I don't have Eliwood and Yune, so I have to see what other people do with this, but I do have Cynthia, or at least can easily get her, and I am super excited to use her in Gale Force. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. And yeah, again, let me know down in the comments what your favorite refine is, and whether or not they met your expectations. As always, if you like the content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that jazz to help support the channel. Only takes 5 seconds to subscribe, but it truly does help out the channel a lot, and I really do appreciate all the constant support. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, wait, I already said that. It's early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed, and uh, yeah, really cool uh, refine. See you all next time. Bye everyone!